Hey fellow equestrians, it's Clara Venting here, and today I'm doing a little transformation video for you guys. So this is Owen, I bought him in January of 2018. He is a 8 year old 16-3 hand Dutch warm blood gelding. This is actually video from when I very first uh, tried him out, very first time I rode him in Colorado. I was actually on a family vacation, so I didn't really have the proper attire, but uh, I saw that he was there and I wanted to go try him. But, so as you can see, he's kind of very inconsistent with the contact. Um, very above the bit and behind the vertical and just really hot. As you can see, he tries to take off at the canter multiple times. And very, very heavy in your hands. Very hard to control, very hard to ride. But, I must have just seen something in him. And really, I really, really liked him for some reason, even though he was quite awful at the beginning um, almost impossible to stop after we went over just a teeny tiny cross rail but he loved jumping and I, I just loved him to death and he, he had such a good brain he just he was just a little hot and I could tell there were a lot of things that we just needed to completely start over with as he he just didn't have much much flat work and much groundwork and we kind of just needed to start over from the beginning but, like I said, I guess I just saw something special in him because I loved him to death and I bought him next thing. <laughs> so, this was my very first ride on him at home, my very first lesson on him. And as you can see, he's very inconsistent in the bridle, um, not really understanding contact. And what you can't tell is how heavy he is. Um, I have my reins bridged just to be able to try and keep a consistent contact and he was very, very tiring to ride. I had to take so many breaks because of how exhausted I would be because he has such a huge canter stride and such a huge trot. So, as you can see here, his canter is very large and he can't really hold himself round or collected um, way back when. So, he was very, very hard to keep from just sticking his head up to the sky and running. As you can see, I was doing a lot of uh, check and releases and half halts to just try and get him to come back to me and releasing slightly just so he can see that he can have that, that little bit of freedom. Um, he had some disagreements as he would try to run and did not like when I was holding him, holding him back. He just wanted to stick his head up to the sky and run. And he was a very, very strong horse, so he could do it my trainer and I would have to take turns riding him in my lessons because of just how exhausted you would get. Your arms would get tired, your abs, your legs would be so sore. And he had some some little, little issues in the beginning, as you saw a little rear there. Um, he just was so, he's so sensitive. Um, so back in February of 2018, I sent him off to surgery to get a small bone chip in his fetlock removed. I bought him knowing that he had this and knowing he would need the surgery, so this set us back quite a bit. I think it it was about four months recovery, I think. But the surgery went really well and he recovered super awesome, but that was a, a major setback in our, um, in our riding journey. But... He needed it to happen and, you know, I was going to do anything I could do to keep him happy and healthy and comfortable. I was definitely not going to jeopardize him just to ride. So, then after four months of recovery, I slowly started to be able to ride him again and it was very difficult bringing him back into work. He's a very hot horse by nature and... We were just trying to get him to stay calm while I slowly brought him back into work and he wasn't a huge fan of that. 
as you can see here he just he wants to go and I wouldn't let him go and so he would kind of get upset and throw a buck in there but you know I didn't want him to hurt himself again as slowly bringing a horse into work back into work to keep them from re-injuring themselves so that was rough and that took quite a while to to get him to that point so eventually once we got to the point where he wasn't going to constantly try and buck me off not out of rudeness or meanness but just out of he, energy he just had a lot of energy he just was so worried about cantering he was impossible to just keep him trotting um, when we were trotting he was like jigging and trying to pick up the canter and when we were cantering he just he would either have to go really really fast and stick his head in the sky or I would have to work so hard and he would actually come behind my leg and be too slow so it's kind of a constant battle to find the happy medium and also working to get him to the point where he could be relaxed was was very tough then eventually we started jumping and it was not so well at first <laughs> he was very sensitive and if you just touched him just right he would freak out and do what you just saw um, also, this was his reaction to any sort of checking him back because all he wanted to do was gallop over the jumps. So he would shoot his head up to the sky and flip his head and just not even jump properly at all. Um, so we were really, really working on his patience. And with single fences, I didn't get many videos of, of what he would do over single fences at the beginning, but three strides in front of the jump, he would just take off and rocket launch over them. So, um, sadly I didn't get much footage of that, but it got so much better. However, he could just tell he was just so worried and nervous. We tried a ton of different bits. This is him here in a hackamore, so not a bit in his mouth. And it just... It just wasn't good for him. You can see him swishing his tail. He's not a huge fan of it. You know, he didn't work any any better in it. So we kept kept trying different bits and kept looking for other things. Um, eventually, we got him to the point where on the flat he could be semi relaxed. As you can see here, he's not hot. He's not being hyper, but he's not relaxed to the point where he's really coming round and bending for me. Now, this is from one of our first jump schoolings. Uh, can't really trot a fence. We still can't really trot. He just wants to canter and run and jump over things. So we're kind of just running around with like no control at all. Just tearing things down because he's so worried about running and he's so worried about me yanking on his face to slow him down. So how we fixed that was a lot, a lot of just patience. And letting him realize, hey, I'm going to go over this jump and I'm not going to rip on your mouth before or after the jump. And it really, really worked for him. It was kind of hard because the jumping was rough, but he just needed to learn that you know he can walk, truck, canter, and jump without me hanging on his mouth to keep him from taking off and galloping. But there had to be some level of holding, otherwise I would have died. But at the beginning, it was just a lot of him fighting and me just saying, hey, trust me. Um, a lot of flipping his head and none of this was out of pain. I had him see chiropractors. I had him see vets. I had him see massage therapists. I had him have electromagnetic therapy and it just, there was nothing wrong with him. He just needed patience and time. A lot of things we did was stopping after fences to kind of keep him on his toes. And once we were jumping, he could not walk. He would do this little jog because he was just way too excited and just could not walk. Actually, at the very beginning, even if we were just having a flat ride in, a, in dressage tech, he would not walk. He would just do this super fast walk or this little jog here. As you can see, still, he's just, just kind of running around and flipping his head and not really having any control. He is a very brave horse, so he was never really worried 
about the jumps. He never looked at the jumps. He was never super spooky. It was everything else. But. So this was from our first cross-country schooling, and it was very interesting. I was kind of terrified to take him cross-country schooling because of how hot he was and how much control we did not have yet. But I took him out cross-country schooling, and he really just came alive. He was having so much fun that he wasn't being worried and he wasn't trying to take off and he wasn't flipping his head so much and running down the fences. He, he really, really loved it. Now there was still a level of, of that as you can see right here, but it was so much better and I could tell that cross country was just so good for him. He did not care what we were jumping, he would jump anything and everything and Oh my gosh, cross country on him was so fun. He still had moments where he would get a little hyper right there. He just he just kind of had a little tantrum where he just he just had so much energy. But this is from our most recent schooling and he's really got the banks figured out and we're starting to jump some bigger fences and his jump form is really improving as before he would just mow down the fences and not lift his knees and sit back at all. Um, but he really started to get clever with his feet and stuff like this with the up bank and the down bank to make him think about what he's doing instead of just run and jump it was really good for him. He really loved it. Right here we are jumping a big table and um, this was really good for Owen to, to sit back and come on his hind end with this wider fence as he... <laughs> He overjumps it ridiculously, but what really helped him out was just diversity. Doing different things, different questions, different jumps really, really worked well for him. He really loved it. He loved keeping his mind busy. He didn't, he didn't like it when he could figure something out and expect it. So eventually he got to where we could do some prelim level stuff with this down bank to this big log here and he just he's always so game and now uh, this was from a show jump clinic I did with the Olympic show jumping coach this was Owen and I's first like big outing and this is really when our show jumping kind of started to to get itself figured out he was so he's, he was really starting to relax with jumps he wasn't just thinking about mowing him down and he wasn't constantly flipping his head and he was starting to sit back on his hind end and lift his knees and really jump properly. Really learned a lot from this clinic and he loved it. He loved all the different questions. And there we did a two stride and he didn't completely demolish the back jump because normally when he would land he would just take off and haul and destroy whatever he's pointed at next. So I was really proud of him really really proud of him and uh, this is when we started to kind of bring the jumps up a little bit and he he was doing really well granted he would still sometimes get a little hot and try to um, forget what he's doing and just kind of try to run but a little check and release and he would come back so nicely there was there was still a level of inconsistency and fighting but this was the moment when I could really start to tell tell we were getting somewhere and and this is from our, our first show. This was just a schooling and he can he can canter up to jump slowly and canter out of jump slowly and do straight lines. Lines were very, very hard for him. Um, so I was really proud that we could we eventually could go do hunter courses without him losing his mind and we could trot jumps and do tight turns after fences because we weren't landing at a gallop with our head to the sky. And uh you know, we could start doing things like this, like a little three stride and make it um, before he would either gun it and take a stride out or I would have to be in his face so much that we would have to chip and add a stride just to not knock the back rail. And so he's really starting to become adjustable and I could really start to get a feel for him and we really, really started to mesh and sort of trust each other and understand each other and now... He was still hyper. He's, I think he'll always be a hyper and nervous horse, but 
we get to the point where we have a certain level of trust and we can actually get stuff done and look nicely and have us both be comfortable. So our first show went amazing. We did the two six and three foot jumpers, as you can see right here. And oh my gosh, it was so much fun. We had knocked a couple of rails just because he he's still not jumping properly. He doesn't have the proper bascule. His form over the jump just isn't quite there. So we had been working on that. And then this is our most recent jump school. Um, we kind of sw are switching it up a little bit and jumping at home. We typically don't jump him at home because of how crazy it makes him. But right here you can see that he's just totally fine and jumping quite normally. And actually we jumped the biggest we've ever jumped right here, which is a 3-6 oxer. And he's really starting to get his form down and really starting to wait for the jumps and start thinking about what he's doing instead of just taking off. And now here's some clips of our dressage progress, which we hadn't been working on a lot. But as you can see, his trot is so relaxed. He's getting consistent in his frame. He's not as round or bending as I'd like him to be all the time, but you know, that relaxation is there and that's what I'm searching for. We could get to the point where I could, you know, put my leg on without him freaking out and trying to take off and we could actually walk. Guys, we could walk without trying to go trot or jig or he just is so much more relaxed now and trusting. And the, at the beginning, I had to ride him in such harsh bits. And this clip here, I'm riding him in a snaffle and he's being totally wonderful and pleasant. His canter is slow and collected and balanced. And we could even stretch. As you can see here, we're doing a little stretchy trot. I could throw my reins away and he wouldn't try to take off. He would just put his head down and stretch and do a nice little trot. We still need a lot of dressage work, but the, the, the amount of how far he's come is incredible. Just as a little reminder, this is where we started. Our rides look much better and they also feel much better to me. What's truly crazy to me is Writing him, looking back at these videos, writing him was so difficult. Now, when I'm looking back at these videos, it doesn't look that difficult. It, it looks bad, but it's not... I don't look like I'm literally uh, having the worst time of my life, but I truly was. He was very difficult to ride, and I'm so proud of how far he's come. So, I mean, it's been less than a year that I've been riding him, but I'm so proud of our progress and I can't wait to see what another year does for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you on my next video. Bye!